it's been a big topic though, you know, large language models, Pat. Uh, of course, we've seen what's happened over the last few weeks uh, with uh, Microsoft and of course with Google and BARD and, and AWS being the third, you know, to kind of come up with a story here. And so AWS isn't a browser company. They don't have a search tool in the traditional way that you think about it. So, but one of the biggest opportunities, and you and I, I think, talked about this on the last couple of podcasts is large language models aren't going to be just about the open internet. I kind of look at what we're seeing right now as a bit of a parlor trick. You know, it's going to be a consistent set of information that every company has access to through the browser. You know, Bing is is optimizing kind of the way you ask a question to a search engine. But Google, if you type the search in using traditional search methods, will still find you pretty good data. But we're starting to see what can happen. I think the big sort of inflection point is we're starting to have conversations with our AI or with the with the machine instead of you know searching in a very specific way that's machine friendly. Um, but the future of generative AI, I think, has a lot more to do with the way customers and businesses can can create and optimize workflows or processes or build in automations using you know big sets of data that live inside of systems of record and ERP and um, inside of business CRM transaction data, uh, employee data through an HCM system or a supply chain management system that's talking about you know your supply chain operations. And right now, you know, the ability uh, to be able to train those models and use those models in the cloud is going to be something enterprises are looking to. So yes, OpenAI is a, you know, provides a large language model. That's where we get ChatGPT. Of course, Google is building their large language model, which is going to be BARD. Amazon is basically saying, we're going to partner with Hugging Face. And this may not be the only thing they do, but Hugging Face, it basically uh, democratize and make available, um, you know, it's open source large language model for AWS clients or AWS users. So that could be through SageMaker, that could be um, done through, um, you know, uh, what's the other, it could be done through container services, Pat. Um, and so there's a few different ways that this is going to be able to be done. I think this is a really important for Amazon to have a claim to stake in terms of how they're planning to participate in the large language model space and towards generative AI. I think that, you know, this has got to be competitive. And of course, like I said, is is Amazon has tons of data, but needed a partner to sort of help build and make it openly available, an LLM that could be utilized by all of its AWS user base. And so that's what I think is going on here. Um, I think it's going to be more utilized and important for what I would call enterprise business applications, uh, customer interactions, conversations and chatbots but not the kind that we're all getting really accustomed to with ChatGPT where it's using open internet data. This is all about that data that sits below the corporation in the company's databases, uh, in the system, <clears throat> like I mentioned. So, um, you know, interesting, like I said, interesting because I think it's timely. I think everybody's pulling forward their announcements. I have a feeling that Microsoft sort of reconfigured the pace of generative AI by coming out and, and announcing the ChatGPT 3.5, the one that you and I went to the event, and that pushed for BARD, and now AWS feels a bit obligatory to have an answer. Having said that, building development tools for these enterprise workloads to use large language models is pretty interesting and pretty exciting. And of course, it should be beneficial for the company's tools, including SageMaker, but also including Inferentia and Trainium. Yeah, so um, first off, uh, this announcement was an expanded relationship AWS had a relationship with Hugging Face. I don't think it was reactive. Um, what they did do is they had to talk about uh, them them uh, doubling down. Um, the other thing I want to point out to our listeners is that AWS hosts more, um, more uh, machine learning uh, workloads than anybody else uh, out there. So while it's kind of funny, while all, like most of the focus was on Google versus Microsoft on the consumer side, <clears throat> very few people were talking about the Azure versus AWS versus uh, GCP. And Daniel, as Daniel said, this is where, you know, a lot of the heat is. And oh, by the way, a, a lot of these startups uh, uh, who are out there who want to take advantage of generative AI uh, AWS uh, will be a a place that they will be uh, looking. Uh, 
And the other thing, it's important, like Microsoft and similar to Google, AWS has a ton of examples uh, with AI. I mean, all of Alexa uh, that serves all of its devices uh, are, are based on um, NLPs and low latency uh, uh, operations that they run off their own silicon called uh, uh, infer, uh, inferentia. Um, but what the company is doing is they are integrating um, hugging face into all of its um, AI uh, workflow, specifically uh, SageMaker. So yeah. that's a that's a a, a key one uh, right there. I'm super interested to see uh, what they do with Amazon Code Whisper, which is essentially uh, AI building, um, you know, creating code, right? Azure talked uh, a lot uh, about that uh, as well. So net net, a ton of excitement, right? You have Microsoft uh, aligning with OpenAI. You have Google aligning with Anthropic. I need to know a little bit more about Anthropic. Uh, and then AWS is aligning with Hugging Face. So Dan, which company has yet to even talk about generative AI or align with a major partner here? There's a few, but I mean, I Apple. think if, Apple has not even okay. talked. Well, I was actually going to say IBM's using different words. Oracle really hasn't said anything yet, despite the fact they have a number. But yes, you're right. And obviously, that's the freaking obvious one. I should be fired. No, no, it's, but that was just the one on my mind and the one that I put in my tweet. I know, so I, don't, I, I used was to trying read to read your mind. You there. We used to be closer. Yeah. It appears we've grown apart. Yeah. I actually, it's, it's funny. I on IBM, I did look at uh, at the words that they used, and and they didn't use the um, you know they didn't use the words that AWS, Google, and Microsoft use. But I think they they did a better job explaining the entire uh, landscape of natural languages. But yeah, so Apple, where the heck is Apple? Who are they going to partner with? You know, who I think I, a I don't think they're they they know how to do it on their own. Uh, they are not good at cloud and doing things in the cloud. They're very good at device. I think uh, they'll probably partner with AWS in uh, in, in what they do. Uh, you had Intel-based uh, Mac instances. Wait, hold on. From an, pro prognostication, Pat, yeah. Apple and AWS tie up? Yeah, I think AWS and Apple are going to tie up based upon their prior uh, relationship. I don't think Apple's going to like wake up and get good at the cloud. They've sucked at doing stuff in the cloud for for years. It's not a core competency. Not I that heard they know how to route all the data through China. I don't know what you're talking. Do about. they? I didn't know that. I didn't know that. But is that? Can I quote you on that? In uh, just, one of my Forbes that's articles. A, that's a true story I made up. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, I think it's going to be AWS and Apple. Apple's going to be writing huge checks to AWS to figure out. Uh, what they do as soon as uh, Google and Microsoft start popping out consumer, more consumer uh, goodness, Apple's going to be uh, on the hook uh, for for something. 